In this video you will learn how to implement a single select and multi select and customize it inside React. And actually what I want to show you in this video is a library and not a custom implementation. And I'm not a fan of using libraries, but there are some use cases where it is much easier to use a library than to implement it on your own. And actually what I want to show you is a library which is called React Select. It is on github.com, Jet Watson, React Select, and here it is. And actually you can see how popular it is. This is like the most popular library to work with single selects and multi selects inside React. And it has an amazing API and it is super customizable. This is why here I want to show you 5 different ways how you can use this library for your everyday needs. So here I already generated React application. And to install this library you can simply write yarn add react select. I won't write this command because I already installed this package. Now let's look on the first way of usage. This is just a usage of single select and multi select with our predefined data, which are static. As you can see here, I am inside app and I have options. This is an array of objects with value and label. And the format here is important because this is a format how React Select will accept our data. So now let's import this select from React Select. And here we can return instead of div our custom select. This is why here we are providing select and the only thing that we must provide inside is a list of options. And this is exactly this options property that I prepared here on the top. So this is the minimum usage of select library. And here is what we are getting. As you can see here inside browser, we are getting a select. And it is already customized, styled, we can open it and here we see our users. We can select a user and it is selected here. And obviously here we want to react on selection in some way and for this we have a non change. And here inside we can simply provide a function, for example handle change and here on the top let's create it. And what we are getting here inside is selected option. And let's just console log it here to see that it is working. Here is our handle change selected option. I am saving this and reloading the page. Now every single time when we are selecting a user, here we are getting the whole object inside our handle change. Which actually means here we can do whatever we want, for example update a state inside our component or make an API request. Now the next usage that we want from React Select is obviously multi-select and it is extremely easy to use it because we don't need to change anything. And here we just need to provide is multi. And actually this is a boolean and it will directly change the whole single select in multi-select. So let's reload the page. As you can see here it is already changed. By default we don't have anything. Now when we are selecting an item it is not a single select. We are getting here a user. And we can select several users and here they are rendered like inside multi-select. And we can directly remove every single user or add it again. And as you can see our handle change is directly working with our multi-select. But here we are not getting a single object. Now we are getting an array of selected users. The next use case that you for sure need is a synchronous load of data. Because actually we are not storing our data just like this on the front end. We typically want to fetch this data from the back end. Which actually means Means, for example, these options must come from the API. So how we can do that? And actually for this we should use another select. It is not select, but a sync select. And we are importing it from react select slash async. Now here we must change our select to our async select. And here we are not providing options and multi. What we are providing now here is load options and this is a function. And here we want to create a function load option. And as you can understand this is a function where we will load our options. But this is not only it. Because actually we can write something inside our single select or multi select. And then we must load options from the backend which will be filtered. And this function is exactly for this. So this load options is getting to parameters. First of all it is our search value. And secondly a callback. And this search value is important. This is not like we are loading all our options always. Actually from the backend if you have like 10,000 of items we don't want to load all of them. It might be that we just need to load like 5 of them or we don't load anything and we load just when we have a search value. 
And this is why we are getting here a search value and a callback. And actually we must call this callback after, for example, our API call is finished and we have our data. This is why what we can write here, we can write set timeout to simulate that we are doing API call, which is two seconds long. Now what we want to do inside to test it, I actually want to filter our options. So let's say that this is our database and here we are inside backend and we are preparing our filtered options. And to filter them we can simply take this options, filter, and here we are getting every single option. And actually here we can use option label and here we want to use two lowercase. In this case we can compare lowercase search value with lowercase label. And here we are checking that our label includes and here inside we must provide the search string, in our case it is search value to lowercase. Which actually means these are our filtered options which are filtered by our search value. And after this we can simply first of all console log here our load options to check that it is working. And here I want to see our search value and our filtered options. And after this we must call our callback and provide inside our filtered options. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page and as you can see nothing is happening. And actually now here we don't have any options and we can just try to write here for example check. And as you can see now local option is triggered twice, first of all with J and secondly with J and A. And here is our response because actually this was our search value and this is our filtered data, which actually means this variant is suitable for us if we have lots of data on the backend. We are not loading anything before search. And now we are searching here something, we have our search value and here we are getting data from the backend. And actually if I will write here again J and A and we are getting our load options here because of callback we rendered Jack and now we can click on it and it is selected. And this is how you typically use load options. And now for sure you have a question, okay, but I want to load all my data by default. And you can certainly do that by one more parameter. And this parameter is called default options. And this is a boolean. You don't need to provide anything here. And now when I will reload the page, as you can see here, after two seconds we are getting load options and we are getting all our values because our search value was an empty string. Now here directly we see all our values and we can select something. Which actually means by default just with load options it is suitable for big amount of data. If we are using default options then we will render all your data directly inside React Select. And what is really awesome it is working as multi select out of the box. We can simply write here is multi and it is working just like previously. We are reloading here a page. We are getting our data after two seconds. Now here we can select something and our multi select is there. The next important case that you need in your project is obviously customizing and styling our select. And it is totally possible and it is really comfortable inside React Select. And as you can see here I reverted our asynchronous example to the plain select. And here inside options I have not just value and label but also a color. Because actually we want now to apply colors inside our select. And in order to do that we must provide one more parameter which is called styles. And here let's create a property which is called color styles. And now here on the top we are creating color styles and it is an object. And inside first of all we are getting a control. So what is control? This is a container of our React Select. And here inside we are getting a function with the property styles. These are our default styles for the control. And what we must do here we must return. So this is a function where you return updated styles. And here we are returning an object where we are spreading our styles. So actually this line doesn't do anything, we simply took our default styles and we returned them. But after that we actually can change some properties. For example here we can write background color, it will be white and we can see the changes directly. I will reload the page and as you can see now our background here is white, we can check it. So here is our control and as you can see background color is white. Now let's change our options and for this we have a property which is called obviously option and here we also get our styles. But we are not getting here just styles, we also as a second parameter are getting lots of states. And here directly I will destructure them and get from it data, is disabled, is focused and is selected. And now here inside I want just to console log everything. 
So first of all here we must return our object with styles, so here I am spreading styles, but I also want to check what is inside option. And here we are getting our data, then is focus, is selected and is disabled. Let's reload the page now. As you can see here inside console we are not getting anything, but here after I open the select we are getting three console log options. And with these three options we are getting inside first of all our data. This is actually the data of the option and now we have true, false and true. And actually it means that it is focused, when we open our select the first item is in focus, then is selected is false because it is not selected and this disabled is not there, this is why it is also false. And actually we can use all these states to change our colors and styles. This is why it is extremely flexible. For our case we don't need that, what I want to do here is just change a color and here I want to write data.color. So how it works, we are getting here the color based on the option and actually here inside every single option we can provide additional properties, just whatever we want. And here inside we will get access to these properties because this is a reference to our option. Let's check this out, I'm reloading the page and here all our options are colored now. Now we also might want to change colors of our multi-values. This is why here let's remove this console log and create one more property which is multi-value. And here also we have a function where we have our styles and here we have access to the data when we destructure our object. Now here we want to return as always our styles and we want to change here our background color, we can write data.color and secondly I want to change the color of our text and it will be here FFF, so it will be white. Let's reload now the page, open select and select something. And as you can see now it is orange, so our color was directly applied to this multi-select. And actually as you can see this cross is white, which means it is working. But if we want to change the label, we must update the label. This is why here we can write multi value label and it is also a function with styles and data. And here we want to return back our merge styles with color white or FFF. Let's reload our page and try again, here I am hitting jack and now our jack has white color. And the last thing that I want to tune is hovering on this cross, I don't like it. This is why here what we can do, we can tune our multi value remove. And it is also a function with our styles and data. And here we want to return our updated data. And here first of all we want to provide a color, it will be FFF and also cursor, I want it to be pointer. And here we can write hover, just with colon hover to update it. And here we also want a color which will be white. Let's reload the page and check again, I am selecting here jack and now here on our cross, first of all we have a nice hover with cursor pointer and secondly we don't have this ugly background that we had here previously. And the last case that I want to show you is createable select, which actually means inside this create we can directly create new options. And as you can see here I will import not select, but createable select. And we are importing it from react select slash createable. And actually here we don't need to change anything except of our select to createable select. And actually it is already enough, we can simply reload the page and try to type something here. For example I am typing foo and as you can see here we are getting create foo text, which actually means we can hit on it and we will get it inside handle change. And as you can see here is our new object label foo, value foo and we can send it for example to the API to create it. But it is not all, here is a bonus, I want to show you two more callbacks which are also extremely important for debugging or writing different cases. And here what we can do, we can provide additional option which will be on input change. So we have on change, but this is on input change. And here I want to create handle input change. Let's create now this function here on the top and actually we are getting here two things. First of all here we are getting our input value and secondly we are getting here action meta. And this is just a function where inside I want to write console log, handle input change and this is first of all our input value and secondly action meta. But it is not all, actually inside our handle change we also have a second parameter and it is also action meta. Let's console log it here and check how it works. I will reload the page here, we don't see anything, now we open our select, nothing is happening. Now we will select our jack 
And as you can see here are different console logs. First of all, we have our handle input change and this is set value. And here the previous value is empty string. Now after this we have an action menu close, which actually means we have a sequence of events inside React Select. And we can use them for different cases of our code. After this we have a handle change. This is exactly a selection of the option. Here we are getting our option inside the array and here is an action. Actually it was select option and here inside we can see what option was selected. And after this what was happening is a new action input blur, which means actually it is click outside and after this it was menu close. Which actually means React Select is giving us a lot of different events, so we can react on them. And actually if you are interested to know how to implement a search bar with correct state inside React, make sure to check this video also.